board. Um, could we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you, everyone. Um, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? None. Okay. All right. Seeing none, um, we'll move on to the approval of the school board minutes. Um, the first set of minutes we have are from our regular meeting on Tuesday, March 8th, um, 2011. Do I have a motion? I move that we approve the minutes from the Tuesday, March 8th business meeting. Second? I think it was a regular meeting, March 8th. March 8th was a regular meeting, yes. So, second. Yes. Okay, thank you, David. Okay, all those in favor? All right, six zero. All right, minutes from the special business meeting, Tuesday, March 15th. I move to approve the minutes from the special business meeting Tuesday, March 15th. Okay, second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? All right, and then special business meeting um, Tuesday, March 22nd. I move to approve the special business meeting minutes from Tuesday, March 22nd. Second. Okay. All those in favor? So. All right, and then um, the last set of minutes are the special business meeting Tuesday, April 5th. I move. And we have an amended change there. Right. Jump the gun, David. I know. Let's see. Um, does everyone have the revised copy of that? I just want to make sure that we're all, everyone has read the revised copy. It was on your chairs. <clears throat> Excuse me. It includes um, the consideration to reconvene the school board credentials review committee. Thank you. I move that we. I move to approve the special be, special business meeting of Tuesday, April fifth, two thousand and eleven. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Six seven. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, now we will move on to comments from our student representatives. I think we have two representatives from the middle school. And if you could introduce yourselves and tell us what grade you're in, if you hadn't planned it. Okay. Hello, my name is Eva Mealy, and I'm in seventh grade. And I'm Gabby Raymond, and I'm in seventh grade also. And we're representatives, representatives of our middle school student council. To start, let's talk about the Letters About Literature. Letters About Literature is a competition where you write a letter about a book that is inspiring to you. Our school has the first and second place winners, first being Libby O'Brien of the 8th grade, writing to Lois Lowry about Number the Stars. Libby won $100 in cash and a $50, tar $50 Target gift card. She will now go on to nationals. In second place was Lily Jordan, who wrote about the Webster Dictionary. We also had five semifinalists, more than any other school in Maine. As for spring sports, girls 7th lacrosse, lacrosse team has 24 girls, and same with the 8th grade girls. 7th grade boys lacrosse has 24 and the 8th grade boys have 22. 7th grade baseball has 13 and same with the 8th grade. 7th grade softball has 11 and 8th grade has 13. Outdoor track has 50 people. This week is Spirit Week. So far Monday was Pajama Day and today was Superhero Day. Tomorrow will be Clash Day and Thursday Cape Color Day. We will have no school on Friday and April vacation will begin Friday and be until Monday the 25th. Guys and Dolls had four amazing performances. Eighty kids partic participated in the play, almost one-eighth of the school. Lisa Stevens is putting together shadow boxes. They are items from the play. 
Shadow boxes are boxes of memories, pictures, and props from the place. They are planning to make many shadow boxes from, from past plays. Um, cool. Friday, Friday, April 29th will be a makeup conference day, so that means an early release for the middle school. That's all for us. Good night, and thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Could you speak faster next time, please? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, high school. Matt and Reed. Um, yeah, so fourth quarter is now officially in, uh, in I guess. Um, third quarter finished about two weeks ago, so grades are just about done, I think, now. Yep. And in terms of spring sports, they started up last week in earnest, so I think some of the first competitions are later this week. Yep. And that will carry through. Yep. April vacation yeah. uh, begins next week, and then after that, uh, the juniors will take their SAT. Seniors will be uh, juniors, sophomores, and seniors will be starting to take their um, their AP exams, which run for around two weeks in the beginning of May. And then after that, seniors will be participating in their senior transition project, which is, which is sort of like a a goal to find future occupations or aspirations for students through the use of internships or job shadowings. Great. Thank you. Um, all right, so we're moving on now to comments from pub the public on agenda items. Does, do we have any, I don't see anyone here. Um, so we'll move on to recognition. Um, Ken, we have I think five areas of recognition. We do. Jeff, were you going to introduce Angelo's recognition? Yeah. I don't think Angelo is, no, Angelo's not here today. Uh, but Angelo is one of the students who goes to the Portland Arts and Technology High School. Um, Angelo is in the, um, the automotives program and has been uh, for a couple of years, I believe. And he participated with a group of students from PATHS um, in what's called the Skills USA competition in, in Bangor. Um, and we're very proud of his accomplishment. He, he got the highest, um, the highest written score um, for the written part of the test. Um, and he took third overall in the state of Maine in the automotive care competition. So he's got a bright future ahead of him, which is really wonderful. So. To recognize him. Great. Thank you, Jeff. You want to stay there for the chess team? Chess team. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to have to do this one a little bit from memory, but it was uh, the chess state chess championship was, I think, two weeks, two weeks ago, um, and our team went up. We were missing, uh, it might have been because of a theater. Um, one of our, I think this, the second best, best player on the team had a, uh, had a conflict with some other school event, so was not able to go, um, and yet missing the second best player, the team still came in second place in the state. Um, so they did an outstanding job, um, uh, particularly for a young team. So that's the Keepers with High School chess team, Great. which operates very much behind the, under the radar <laughs> of the entire school, but they're a bunch of talented kids. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Good evening. I'm pleased to be here tonight to help introduce and just uh, um, pride of association with Maine Teacher of the Year semifinalist, fourth grade teacher at Pond Cove, Ingrid Stressinger. Ingrid joins five other teachers in the narrow field statewide uh, for the next stage of this very rigorous selection process. As Ingrid will be the first, as has, she has been the first to point out, she represents the best qualities of all of our teachers. By getting this far in a very competitive nomination selection process, Ingrid has already demonstrated outstanding teaching skills, leadership in the school and in the district, and an ongoing commitment to fostering positive and productive relationships with families at home. And those bonds last long after the kids leave Pond Cove. Ingrid's dedication to meeting the highest 
professional and personal standards have earned her the respect and admiration of her colleagues, families, community groups, and of course all of her many students over the years. On a historical note, Ingrid is no stranger to uh, state level honors, having won a prestigious Prestige, presidential Award for Math and Science in the year 2000. The Teacher of the Year Award, though, is a little different. Ingrid pursues each subject matter in great depth and with terrific passion, but she's still a generalist because she's in the traditional and honorable mold of the elementary teacher. Her specialty really is tying things together and being a model for this herself to keep kids reading, writing, researching, exploring, and solving problems. Typically for her, Ingrid invested many hours in the, uh, in the application process to reach the semifinal stage, and she's already begun over the weekend, I understand, preparing for the next set of requirements, which are even more demanding. A visiting team from Augusta will be here in a little over a month on May 18th to meet with Ingrid's colleagues, um, students, parents, community members, and I hope board members will keep you apprised of the schedule and I hope many of you can make it that day. So congratulations to Ingrid. Um, if you bear with me, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Um, I've been um, very uh, overwhelmed in a very positive way by the um, outpouring of support I've gotten from so many people in the community, from students who are very excited and uh, part of the process and look forward to being part of the continuing process, um, from parents of current students and former students, colleagues, and just all kinds of people throughout the town. So I'm really appreciative of that. And um, as I've said um, more than once, because I feel it so strongly, I, um, I couldn't be the teacher that I am if it hadn't been for all of the support that I've gotten from the community over the years, from a, from a wonderfully supportive principal um, who's allowed me to uh, try uh, many new things in my classroom and uh, has been there to see how they work out um, and give me feedback over the years. So, uh, And of course all of the colleagues that I work with who are so professional themselves and share ideas and uh, uh, very supportive uh, as well. So I feel very uh, fortunate um, and all it really took was somebody who um, decided to initiate the nomination process and I hope that in the years to come there will be um, more of those coming for CAPE teachers because we do have such a, a wonderful staff and I've had the opportunity many times through the years to not only work with Pond Cove staff but middle school and high school staff as well and um, I would love to see more CAPE teachers be uh, nominated for Maine Teacher of the Year. And I'm looking forward to the process ahead, and uh, I think it's going to be a great opportunity for reflection for me. And the part that I've already started on has me looking back at what led me into teaching. And uh, that's a really um, good process to go through 25, six years later uh, to reflect back on that. And, to really feel the same passion today that I felt when I began my career. So thank you very much, and um, I would love to represent uh, Cape Elizabeth. I'm happy representing Cape Elizabeth in the process and would love to represent the state of Maine um, as hopefully Maine Teacher of the Year. So thank you. Thank you. Um, before you go, yeah. uh, I wanted to note something on a personal level that uh, I we did meet in negotiating sessions, and you were a fierce negotiator. But uh, I, I do want to say that um, I have a personal connection to one of my stepdaughters, and uh, you have been an excellent teacher to her. And um, um, I'm trying to be circumspect about mm -hmm. this, but uh, you've done a wonderful job on a personal level. I know it for a personal fact, and uh, I, I personally thank you uh, for what you did for my stepdaughter. Uh, as a teacher, and I'm sure you deserve this award um, greatly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ingrid, for all the work that you're doing to uh, to go through the paces for this award. And, you know, I I have not been personally lucky enough to have uh, my children in your class, but um, I can remember back when we first started at Pond Cove, asking about the different teachers, and um, someone said, "Oh." 
Ingrid Strassinger, she is the gold standard of teachers. So, you know, I'm not surprised to see you where you are now, and I wish you the best of luck in any way that we can support you. We'd love to do so, so keep us in the loop. Thank you. Thank you. Is um, Jeff? Okay, Jeff. So, um, in advance, Christina, I know this is probably not the uh, first place you'd want to be, especially when people are talking about you, so I just want to apologize for uh, putting you on the spot here, but uh, really deserve some uh, recognition here for all of your accomplishments, so I apologize in advance. Um, Christina Kuros is a Cape Elizabeth High School sophomore, and she's a member of the Cape Nordic and Cape Outdoor Track and Field team. She is... Um, set, making history as the first high school Nordic adaptive skier in Maine and um, the first Eastern High School Championship uh, champion uh, to compete in the Sitski event. And that took place in, at uh, Black Mountain uh, in Rumford, Maine on March 4th, or 19th. So uh, very proud and um, happy to uh, share this with the uh, school board and the community. Um, she's also an, an ultimate female uh, athlete finalist, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But in addition to her skiing accomplishments, she's just an incredible person. Um, she has a contagious smile and uh, extremely courageous, very inspirational, um, and extremely modest. She is a little quiet. I think that's changing as uh, she's growing and... Um, <laughs> going through the uh, high school process of maturation from a sophomore into heading into her junior year. So she's definitely opening up, and, um, but on the trails and on the track, she is a fierce competitor. Um, the inspiration that you're providing for all of us, and uh, boys and girls in the state of Maine and uh, New England is just uh, incredible. Um, the opportunities, I think, that um, these young people are uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to see and um, how to be a champion is just, it's really um, a pleasure for me to be talking about this and uh, we're very proud of you. She's currently uh, in first place as of uh, about 20 minutes. Uh, just checked on highschoolsports.net. So first place right now for the ultimate female athlete contestant and um, her brother, Alex, and sister, Anastasia, produced this video and um, published it to a high school sports net. And if you haven't had a chance, definitely watch the video. Um, it is just truly amazing. And um, don't forget to vote. So we've got to get those votes. We have through <laughs> April. All right, we've got to continue it through April. So even if you're away on vacation, find the, find the internet and uh, keep on voting. There's also a link on the Cape Athletic website, too, so uh, that will help you guide you to the uh, highschoolsports.net. But there are a few people, too, that I want to uh, thank for making this happen uh, for the school. Uh, I'd like to thank Dominic DePatsy, Rob Thompson, Pam Vos, Haley Norton, Alex Shaw, and um, student volunteer Alexia Blaisdell, and uh, the entire Cape Nordic team, and especially mom and dad. Andrea and Peter Curls for um, all of their support and, and um, providing this great opportunity for Christina. So, uh, Christina, we're very proud of you. Uh, you're an inspiration to us all, and best of luck this spring. I think the uh, one thing that was just published, the MPA um, set guidelines for wheelchair athletes, and that's going to be an official... Um, it will be officially scored in regular season meets and state championship meets. So another history-making performance here, and uh, I'm just thrilled. I'm so excited for Christina, and this is uh, really one of my most gratifying moments in, as an educator. So, And Christina wants to say a few things. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who has supported me, and
especially the Cape Nordic team and my coach, Devin Morrill, because without him, I wouldn't be able to be participating on the team. And also, I want to thank um, the track coaches, because they're also a big part of it. And this was my first year skiing, so I kind of felt a little um, nervous doing it at first. And, but I realized that everyone's supporting me and that it's okay to just go out there and try. And that I just want like other people who have um, differences to be able to participate, feel like a normal kid and not sit on the sidelines when they have a sport. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Jeff, how long does the voting continue? Through April. Through April. Yes. Is it like the all-star voting? I can vote as many times as you I want. Can. You can. So, in fact, Christina, you've been my Facebook status. Yeah. So it's like Chicago <laughs> so politics. Okay. Keep yeah. voting. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you for taking that risk, Christina. That's what we love to see. Okay. Dom, are you going to report out on the um, Special Olympics? I just got to add another thanks because um, Jeff didn't thank himself, but uh, Jeff really pulled everyone together for Christina. So thank you, Jeff, for, for doing all that stuff. <laughs> awesome. So we had a special Olympic swim meet, and thank you for put, helping put this on the agenda because I think it's really important. We had 22 kids swim in the pool two weeks ago. And if you have never been to a special Olympic swim meet, it is a lot of fun, and it's great to watch the kids. A lot of kids won ribbons, medals. Um, it's really great to see the kids going up getting the ribbons from our uh, police chief and fire chief, and it's great. Um, it was just a great day. Uh, next time, if you guys want to go down there, it's, it's really, really fun. So a lot of kids had a, a, a great meet. And there's also a lot of support in the schools and families. And um, I think one of the most interesting things is that Pond Cove teachers take their entire classroom, several of them, the kids that are mainstreamed for a few classes, they take them all the way to the, uh, down to the pool and they cheer their, um, their peers on. So it's a really nice, nice event. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about this. Thank you, Dom, for sharing that. Okay. I think that that's all we have for recognitions this evening. Um, so we will move on to new business. Um, item A, consideration to approve the proposed 2011-2012 academic year calendar as presented. Do I have a motion, please? Kim? Yeah, I uh, motion to approve the proposed 2011-2012 academic year calendar as presented. Do I have a second? Michael. All right. Discussion? I move. Any discussion about the calendar? Well, for the benefit of the public, if you like this year's school calendar, you're going to like next year's school calendar that the school board is considering. And if you dislike uh, this year's school calendar, you will dislike uh, the calendar <laughs> that they are considering. School will open the day after Labor Day for yeah. students. Uh, it has the traditional November break. December break, February break, and April break, and the other traditional holidays. So it's very similar to this year's calendar. Any other comments or discussion? All those in favor? Six zero. Okay. Then we have um, a consideration Ooh. to approve the following policies for second reading. Um, Kathy, would you like to? In your packet, you will see the um, policies which we considered that they were JKGA and JKGAR, um, which are timeout rooms and therapeutic restraint and procedure on timeout rooms and therapeutic restraint. They have been re, um, I was going to say numbered, re-lettered to JKAA and JKAAR. We had them in our packets last month for first reading. 
There were no changes uh, or suggested changes. So they are here for second reading this evening. Um, and if you might remember that um, this is to um, make changes to the policy that, are, that is consistent with um, MSMA's um, recommended policies and also with policies um, of school districts in our region. If you have any specific questions, I know Dom is in the audience and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer them for you. Other than that, I move that we approve JKAA and JKAAR. Well, I, I guess we don't have to do JKAAR. I approve, I saw, I'm sorry. I, I recommend that we approve JKAA. Okay. I move that we recommend that we approve JKAA. Okay. I'm getting tongue tied. Okay. A second. A second. Okay. Okay. Discussion. Any discussion or comments or questions? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. okay. All right, so we'll move on then to item number C, um, consideration and action to approve the 2011 through 2014 Cape Elizabeth Education Association Collective Bargaining Agreement. Do I have a motion, please? I move to approve the teacher's contract for 2011 through 2014 as negotiated with the Cape Elizabeth Education Association. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. David? All those in favor? Okay. Six zero. Any discussion, or Kathy, do you want to give a brief? Sure, I'll give a brief okay. highlight, um, if I can. Um, first of all, the uh, there's a few changes, but um, a lot of it is similar to the current contract that we have. The um, major changes are that um, salaries in 2011-2012 will have a 0.5% increase on the base. 2012-2013, um, the increase on the base will be tied to the CPIW with a minimum of 0.5% to a maximum of 2%. And in 2013 and 14, the increase on the base will be tied to the CPIW with a minimum of 0.5% to the base to 3% as a maximum. Uh, the athletic and co-curricular stipends for 2011 to 2012 will have no increase. For 2012 to 2013 and 2013 to 2014, there will be an increase of 50 cents per hour for each of those years. And the other um, major piece is that uh, both sides have um, agreed to a commitment to look at different health insurance alternatives and that will roll out um, as things continue to progress with Augusta and the legislature. All right, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everybody. Um, David, uh, yeah, discussion, we, more yeah. discussion. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I think just to add something to Kathy just said, that we're actually creating a task force to take a look at it. I didn't think Kathy mentioned that, but we're waiting until the state legislature passes something. Otherwise, there's not a lot to talk about, potentially. Um, and there's one other thing I just want to note. Uh, our intent, I think it's correct, the intent of both the teacher's uh, portion and our portion, the wording of the contract um, has some slight, um, could be slightly more improved. The Appendix A it says the initial increase in uh, in, in two places for both 2012-2013 and 2013-2014. It really, the word initial is not there, it's only one increase. And secondly, uh, the increase will be based, the CPIU will be based on a yearly calculation as opposed to a calculation each month. So it'll be one increase based on a base calculation of one year of the CPIW. Any other discussion or comments? I'd just like to make a, a comment. You know, sort of the new guy watching 
this process unfold for the first time here. It was really impressive to see how the negotiations were conducted. Uh, it speaks highly of the culture that, that exists um, in this school system. It's, it's sort of personified that hard on issues but soft on people approach, which is always the best kind of approach to conduct these negotiations. But it was nice to see it played out like that. And when I say you, you were very hard on issues, uh, you were, or you wouldn't have had the agreement that you had, but you were also you know, soft on the people who were responsible for carrying out the mission and vision of the district. And really appreciate the, the way the teachers conducted themselves in negotiations as well, because they were the same way. Um, so it's sort of a new guy looking at it. It was reassuring uh, to see uh, the spirit and the intent of negotiations. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Um, thank you to our negotiate the board's negotiating team, Kathy, for leading, um, and David and John for um, being part of the team. I thought we had an expert team. I felt very good about um, the board's representation and completely confident. So thank you very much for all the work it took, and to the teachers' association as well. So. All right, so we will move on now, if there are no further comments, to um, item number D, consideration to approve the following middle school athletic extracurricular staff nominations. Um, we have quite a slate here, so whoever makes the motion may want to move that we approve the slate. Do I have a motion, please? David. Um, I move that we approve uh, the middle school athletic extracurricular staff nominations as set forth in five, excuse me, 6D of our agenda uh, in, the, in the totality. Thank you. Do I have a second, Michael? Okay. All those in favor? Okay, okay. item number E. Yes, you have a request from Quan Cove uh, grades three and four literacy teacher, Talia Edlins. I think her letter is self-explanatory, but for the benefit of the public, uh, Talia is requesting an extended leave of absence for next school year. Be glad to answer any specific questions you have about the request, but I think it's Pretty similar to other requests that have come before you. Do I have a motion? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I move that we approve the extended leave of absence request for Pond Cove staff member Talia Ed Edlund mm -hmm. uh, during the 2011-2012 the school year. Do I have a second? Camp behind. Okay. Any questions or discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Great. All right. Item F. Um, consideration to approve superintendent nominations of the following personnel to continuing contracts. Yeah, just for the benefit of the public and any our new members on <clears throat> the school board, state law requires that the superintendent bring nominations of people who are on probation. It's a horrible term. I dislike it. But it, what it means is uh, any teacher who is in their first year of employment or second year of employment, state law requires that the school board approve the superintendent's nomination. These teachers are evaluated and supervised by their building principals or the director of instructional support, and uh, they do not come before you unless uh, they have the seal of approval. So tonight, the first group are people who will be moving on to continuing contract. These are people who are in their second year of employment in the capitals of the school system. And I'm not going to read the list of names to you, but if you have any specific questions, He's glad to answer them. Do we have a motion to ask? Or? Yes, we should have a motion first. Um, Is there a motion there? Should we? No. Um, may I have a motion? Oh, I'll do it. I'll, 
Um, do you split them up, or should you just? I move to. Slate. Okay, I move to approve the superintendent's nominations of the following personnel to continuing contract uh, in new business six F um, as a whole for the slate of Pine Cove Middle School and District. Okay. Please. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. All those in. Well, do we have discussion? I have a request. Yes. Um, I, I do. I do respect the district team leadership in each of these areas. But when I'm being asked to approve people for final continuing contracts, um, I would just like some more information than simply the stamp of approval by people. I mean, we're supposed to make independent judgments, and I'm not a part of. Use my favorite expression. I'm not a part of the plan. So I just would like. In the future, I, I don't have a problem with these people, that we get a little something about why they are being recommended. What, what kind of process were they put through? Who evaluated them? What was the evaluation? Something so that we can make an independent determination. I, I think that's appropriate. That's it's not, point. but we can have that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I, I, I find it uncomfortable to simply approve somebody I know nothing about other than the principal has recommended. Uh, it's like the nominations of, of personnel, it's the same deal. Um, you know, state law requires that it would never be on your agenda. You really delegate that responsibility to the superintendent. And you've got to trust that the superintendent is not going to bring nominations for teaching positions or bring nominations for continuing contract that don't have that seal of approval. It's really that simple. Well, we don't need to engage in the debate, but I don't quite agree. I know you don't. That's why I said we can have that chat. I know. I think we've got that on the calendar, actually. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Great. And item G is similar. Um, may I have a motion? Well, this is for the consideration to approve the superintendent's nominations for second year probationary contracts. I'll move. I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion. Um, I move to approve the superintendent's nomination of the following slate of personnel to second year probationary contracts. Uh, item 6G. Great. Um, second. Michael. Okay, discussion. Ditto. I quote, I repeat myself. <laughs> Ditto. Quotes from the superintendent. <laughs> we got it. I know, like subsection. I want, I'm repeating I my, my, my concern. <laughs> Ken, can you just share how the, uh, the, the first was for continuing contracts and this is for the second year probationary yes. contracts? Right. These are people who have been in their first year of employment in the Cape Schools and uh, will be on um, probation for a second year. And then they are. And then they go on to continuing contract. Right. right. I can state for the record, I do know one of them, Erica Blau, and she is excellent. Okay. They're all excellent, but they wouldn't be in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> the being whether or not I really <laughs> have the last word here. Father. I am not your father. No, <laughs> all those in favor. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Item H, consideration to approve the high school robotics um, team travel to the VEX World Competition in Orlando, Florida this weekend. That's right. Day after That's tomorrow. Right. Okay. Maybe we can go. <laughs> That's right. Do I have another a, success story? Do I have a motion? I move uh, to approve the high school robotics team travel to the uh, VEX World Competition in Orlando, Florida, April 13th through the 17th, 2011. Okay, do I have a second? Kathy. Second. Um, any discussion? Questions? Good luck to our robotics team. Very exciting trip, I understand. All right, all those in favor? All right. All right. <clears throat> Item I, consideration to approve a leave of absence and use of accrued pay 
leave days for a high school teacher during the 2011-2012 school year. Um, do I have a motion? I move to approve the leave of absence request and use of accrued paid leave days for a high school teacher during the 2011-2012 school year. Kim okay. Second. seconds. Okay, discussion. Questions? Uh, this fails even the minimal test. Do you know who it is? Uh, I would like to request that uh, the, uh, we just discussed the person is a high school teacher. Not she the, asked us to pull her name. David, the, uh, before you read it, um, there's been a request not to uh, disclose the teacher's name given some of the circumstances. So that's why the, the name was not included. Uh, thank you. I didn't catch that in this packet. In but thank you for pointing it out for me. Mm -hmm. Any um, questions? I okay. guess I have one. Mm -hmm. um, the use of accrued paid leave, is that, I'm not accustomed to seeing that in these requests. Is that an ordinary? Yeah, my understanding is that um, it was approved by last year's school board. Um, it's an identical request. Okay. It is a, it is a little bit unusual. Mm -hmm. But given that it was approved last year, um, the, the teacher's making the same request again. Okay. Can I ask a question? So is the accrued paid leave the equivalent of the sick day bank? Isn't that what when they bank the sick days? I believe so. I think it is. But I don't think so. I think it's just this person's. I don't think it means going into the sick bank okay. as well. That's not how I read this request. All right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I think the person has that much leave, so it will not require going into the, the sick bank as well. But I'll check that okay. to be sure. All those in favor? Okay. All right. On to item seven, which is committee reports. Do you have committees who would like to report out? David, I know you do. Uh, yes. Um, pursuant to authorization from the school board, I and a representative uh, from Falmouth and turned out to be several other school districts throughout Maine testified in front of um, the Maine legislature on, I can't remember what day last week, but. Um, Tuesday, April 5th. Same day as the letter, that's right, I remember. <laughs> I almost didn't get on the road, but getting those commas in the right place. Um, it was a very interesting hearing. Uh, the panel was very receptive to opening this up to competitive bidding, would be my interpretation. There were a lot of speak people speaking in favor of it. There were only two groups speaking against it, the Maine Teachers Union, which surprised me a bit, um, but the Maine uh, MEA Trust, which did not surprise me. Um, it's now going to workshop. Um, I've been asked to participate in the workshop. It uh, was scheduled for this Friday. Luckily, it's been continued. Uh, there are three bills pending. Um, I would. I would request that we might want to post on our site the letter that we submitted. It was very well received by the uh, group. And it's not only our evidence that we presented, but also the recommendations we made, they found to be particularly helpful. Um, and I would like this letter signed by you, Mary, uh, to be posted on the website because there were other people who would be wanting copies of it. And right now, it's supposed to go to workshop where they're trying to combine three different bills. And um, if I have the energy, I, I may ask for authority to go up to the workshops. So uh, it's, I'm hopeful, but they do not move swiftly in Augusta. On the other hand, the, the panel seemed very 
in the, in, the, in the particular senators and representatives who were supporting it were fairly well known and fairly influential people in the legislature. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Thank you. Other committee updates? John? Um, so the Finance Committee has completed its work on the budget and presented the budget to the Town Council. Uh, and the, the, the Finance Committee of the Town Council specifically. Um, and that budget um, goes before voters on May 10th. Um, and there is a lot of information on that budget on the school budget website. Um, so any, any information that anybody wants about that budget, you will find there. Um, but we're enthusiastic about it, um, thanks to the, the agreement with the teachers that we just ratified tonight. Um, that budget um, is made, was made possible. Uh, and we're enthusiastic about it, as it represents um, what we think is a, um, a, a very modest increase the taxpayers um, and as well as an ability on the, on the part of the district to maintain essential programs and services. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks for all your work on that. And um, just re want to remind the public that next Monday night is the public hearing on the budget. Um, the town council will be hearing um, comments um, from the public um, on the budget. Um, and then we'll be voting that night. Uh, to support or um, not support the budget after public comment. Could I add one additional comment? Um, I will ask to have this letter posted on the website, but I do want people to know that copies were sent to the union uh, representatives because I do look at this as a cooperative effort. And we sent two letters went out to two different committees. Why they were in two different committees, I don't know. but. Um, copies were sent to the representatives of the union so that they could be fully informed and part of this process. Okay. All right. So is it next Monday? It's, oh no, I, sorry, Monday after next. Next Monday is vacation. It's the 25th. Thank you, Ken. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and I'd like to, if there are no other committee reports, are there any other? Um, I'd like to give just a quick overview of the superintendent search. Um, as most of you know, we've reopened the search, which means um, we uh, did not find a candidate who was a good match uh, for the district at this time. So we have started advertising again. We are advertising on various uh, education websites and um, we, we advertised this weekend and we'll advertise next weekend in the Boston Globe. Uh, we've had some good responses. I feel confident with our responses um, that we'll have a, a good pool. Uh, we close on um, August, or not August, on April 25th um, and should have applications in hand by the 28th. Uh, the CRC will, which is our um, credentials review committee, will meet on May 2nd to review the credentials of our candidates. And then the board will um, tentatively, we are scheduled to meet on May 3rd uh, to choose finalists. And it's my hope that we'll have candidates within, in the district that week for, um, for interviewing. So we're moving along on that. Um, and uh, we don't have a deadline set per se of an announcement, but um, when we have that, I will, um, I'll be relaying that information. Any questions or comments? Okay. Any school board agenda requests for our next meeting or our May meeting? No? Um, announcements of upcoming meetings? Kathy, do you have a, you've got a There's a policy, policy committee meeting? meeting this Thursday at 8.30 in the morning in the Jordan Conference Room. Okay. Um, again, I'd like to remind everyone that April 25th is the public hearing on the school budget. And um, the vote on the school budget, again, um, John um, told us, is May 10th. 
So that will be the date of the school validation vote, the school budget validation vote. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Okay, Kathy. Second? Second. All right. All those in favor? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.